Hey, welcome to New Jump City, everybody, and well, uh, where we recap the week in American and <laughs> Japanese sequential art. I'm your host, Christian, the unbiased king. Espinal. And joining me through Discord uh, it is this strange creature that has joined us. Uh, it is uh, Joshua Gangsta Time Go. Well, it's called Partner, but it should be called Gangsta Time. What up, Chris? What's good, everybody listening? Happy Halloween. Yeah, happy Halloween, everybody. Uh, joining us on this very spooky episode is also our producer, uh, my little brother. It is Edgelord Big News Brian. What's up, guys? Hey, hey, hey. Oh, man, big old show today. Uh, we got a new series joining the lineup. We got some stuff to talk about with Jujutsu Kaisen returning and My Hero Academia. But first, uh, let's not waste any time. Let's get into plugs. Uh, you could find me at the Chris Espinal on Twitter and Instagram. Joshua Cole, where can they find you? At JD Cole underscore 37. That's on Instagram. And at, and, oh, at New Jump City Josh. <laughs> that's on Twitter. Yeah, Brian. Get at me. Find me at B.ESP on both Instagram and Twitter. And if you ever want to catch me when I'm streaming, you can find me at twitch.tv slash it's punchline. Oh, yeah. You can follow the show itself at New Jump City on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, follow us on Twitter, especially because we do a really good chapter of the week poll where we have our audience decide their favorite chapter of the week. And we announce the results on the show. We got a uh, result this week. As per usual, the poll usually goes up on Sundays. Uh, a little bit after the uh, chapters that we cover uh, are released on viz.com's official Shonen Jump website. Uh, and yeah, we we announced the show. We get uh, some audience participation. So check us out there. Vote for your favorites. And uh, we'll announce it on the show. Uh, you can email the show at newjumpcitypod at gmail.com. Please do. It would be very cool to get feedback on the show um, and some thoughts, whatever you guys thinking. Uh, questions, if you guys got it, uh, email us there. Uh, or you can comment underneath the show uh, if you're watching on YouTube. Uh, comment on either the full version of the podcast or the little highlight breakouts for you guys that we make for you guys every fucking week. Uh, you can subscribe while you're at it. Why don't you do that? Uh, drop a subscribe hit that notification bell so you never miss an upload uh if you prefer audio podcasts we are on itunes spotify google Podcasts, pandora wherever you listen to podcasts we are on there uh and yeah follow us on all those things leave us a five-star review if you show uh desire to do so it would be super nice you know good feedback will bring endorphins for all of us <laughs> it would be very nice uh and without further ado let's fucking get into the show uh, where's my batman trends there you go my hero academia this is my hero academia chapter 371 together with shoji uh last we left off we cut away from the main battle at hand with uh, deku and all for one uh, to check in on Shoji's team that is protecting Kuragiri uh, from the oncoming army of heteromorphic uh, corked people uh, led by Spinner, who is now a giant hulking lizard man. Uh, and he's... Uh, he, uh, things are not... Things are going so-so. You know, they've, uh, they're have they getting overwhelmed by the sheer number of people that are swarming the hospital uh, but we have Shoji from Class 1A, uh, one of the main characters of the cast overall, is uh, taking up center spotlight to uh, to stop Spinner from uh, from proceeding onward. Uh, we finally got his little mask off moment. We get to see Shoji without the mask. Uh, and uh, he was just uh, yelling at the people to be like, tell me you have a plan because this fucking mobbing a hospital with innocent people in here is not it uh that's saying it yeah uh spinner is just like ask if me have plan ow what his problem <sighs> boy hurt me uh we see that uh coda notices that shoji has taken center stage um and he uh he uh, spinner is just standing there in confusion as his followers are just like we gotta keep going we gotta steal back kuragiri even if that means sacrifices just tell us what to do and we'll follow and uh spinner just like looks off in a daze and is just like done care uh his followers are like wait what you 
you don't you don't care mm-hmm. uh, you don't care yeah but uh that uh scorpion spider uh quirked person on the top of the building is just like kind of taking over him for him and being like he's saying that history is written in blood meaning such things are unavoidable and he's just like thinking to himself like stupid kid and spinner they're making it harder than it used to be um but you know he commands the army to press forward and uh they start to do that uh but then shoji looks into spinner's like eyes and is just like spinner you're about to set us back 30 years uh and um spinner is just like thinking to himself just like you know thinking back to when um i guess uh, all for one gave him the quirk um and it turns out he's given him more than one quirk he's given him this like big scaly quirk called scale mail uh that will uh like increase his defense on top of that so scales just start to protrude out of spinner's body and he just lunges at shoji sending him backwards into the uh giant into a building uh with his big old multi-blade multi-knife sword um and he sends shoji flying around he cuts off one of his arms off of the off of shoji's tentacles uh and um koda is just like watching on just being like just getting pissed off because uh this guy like the one in charge really is like calling him basically like a traitor and that they're doing like what they're doing is right. Uh, you know, because this is the revolution and, um, they're, what they're doing today will lead to rights for heteromorphs in the future. Um, and it's at that moment, Coda starts to remember as like his head starts to vibrate a little. Um, we get, uh, a, a, a scene where the class one, a students are all sitting around Shoji and he's kind of explaining his backstory and everything. He's taking their ma- his mask off, uh, for them uh, before, it seems. Um, and he explains that his parents uh, weren't heter- heteromorphs like him. They didn't have the arms, but they lived in a town that was, like, really backwards, and they would uh, they all came out in force of a blood cleansing when they t- when uh, Shoji touched someone. Um, so, you know, he was not... Have- he-, he was, like, born on the outskirts. Uh, he wasn't born in a city... Um, you know, Koda Tokoyami and other people like that wouldn't, uh, they might have heard of this stuff in textbooks, but in like rural areas, there's still like abuse happening, uh, as we, uh, learned in the last chapter. Um, so yeah, he, he's just kind of explaining it. And, uh, Mineta has a moment where he's like, oh shit, I called him an o- octopus one time. And he, uh, he really apologizes. He's like, I'm sorry, I didn't know. And um, Shoji's like, I know you didn't mean anything by it. In fact, he changed. He he named himself Tentacle, Tentacle because the Ta in Cole is uh is like an abbreviated uh, word for octopus in Japanese. So, you know, he it's to show that he's aware of it. and He's like kind of, you know, um, taking back the power and being called an octopus, I guess. Um, and he has like you know those scars around him are like obviously like um you know signs of abuse um so people he and he wears the mask mostly because he doesn't want people to like think get the wrong impression of him and think that like he's kind of out for revenge in any way he doesn't want to give off the impression that he holds a grudge um tokoyami is just like well that takes strength and he's like well you know, I've, I've been through a lot, um, and uh, I'd rather dwell on the bad memories and, you know, instead of uh, dwelling on the bad memories, I would rather uh, focus on these, like, single good uh, moments in his, uh, in his life thanks to his body. Uh, and we get this little, like, flashback within a flashback where he... Um, he it, it seems that as a young boy, he like saved this little girl from falling off of, um, of a waterfall. Like she was like being swept away by a river and he used his arms to protect her. Um, so, you know, at that moment, like the other classmates just start to be like, Oh my God, he only, you only have one good memory. Say it ain't so. And they're like, you know, now that we're together, we're going to make a million of them together. And, um, you know, uh, Shoji says that, uh, I know. And 
it'll take more than one generation to tear down like all of the discrimination that they've that like heteromorphs in general have like gone through or will go through but all they have to continue to do is like keep keep doing the work and paying it forward and um, we see that Shoji's goal is to ultimate be, ultimately be the coolest hero the world has ever seen, uh, to give good memory and to give good memories for generations to come. Um, mm. And we cut to the present as the battle continues to rage is on. Shoji is like shouting down at Spinner. He's like, "I was persecuted too, and no, the people who were hurt us weren't justified." But there's got to be a better way. And we cut over to like a flashback of like, I guess from Shoji's point of view of seeing uh, how um, that heteromorphic girl was like thanking Deku for like helping him, uh, for helping her, uh, even though that she was like turned away by several shelters during like the dirty Deku days. Um, and um, she and Spinner's just like, don't care, destroy all. Um Shoji just like kind of implores him to make use of that rage, you know, and try to use it in a more productive way because scars, because we've all got scars that we carry. Um, and, you know, we have this evil, <laughs> the, the, the liberation guy who's just like talking shit in the background. Um, and he's like, do you offer a feasible solution? Only the pathetic cry of your ego. Our hearts have long since hardened by society. Uh, far too hard, hard to be moved by such child, childish naivete. Uh, and then all of a sudden, he's just swarmed by a bunch of like various winged animals. And uh, he turns over and he sees uh, actually Coda, whose like head seems to have opened up uh, and like... It's it, he's just like, I guess, reaching out to a ton of animals using his quirk. And uh, he just like he looks at him and he's just like, don't you dare mock Shoji. And uh, the chapter ends with um, like, I guess, uh, tentacle wrapping his one of his arms with all of his tentacles, like just like, I guess, creating one big muscle uh, attack. And <laughs> we see that Spinner is just like looking at like gross and there's a big panel of shoji <laughs> loading up this fist and saying yeah this is who i am and that's where the chapter ends um wow we wow um josh what do you think of chapter my uh of my hero academia chapter 371 yeah this is a this is an interesting chapter to me for a couple reasons, uh, I went on a pretty big tangent last week about what I thought the themes of this might be, but I think I've got a pretty clear message on uh, what Horikoshi's trying to get across, and uh, which is, I don't know, I guess people get treated bad, but you shouldn't lash out negatively in reaction to it. You should have pride in who you are and move forward and past the criticisms. Yeah. And, and, and love yourself. Oh, um, it's kind of weird. We got the, uh, it was funny cause last week we were talking about Shoji, uh, like, Oh, it, it would have been nice like to see like his backstory of like what happened like with his like you know with the mask like why he has the mask when he's covering up and that like it was built up slightly and you know here we go we got it you know in in a couple pages and i wasn't upset about it or nothing i i kind of expected that's how it would go down and it was cool it was, it was, it was a cool chapter i like that shoji is uh saying a lot of things is standing out and and Staying with the other kid, uh, whose name I can't remember right now, Coda. Uh, I'm really interested in his new diamond head formation. <laughs> I hope it's m more than just talking to geese. <laughs> Maybe he can brain control animal morph people. Maybe he'll control Spinner. That'd be hilarious. Yeah. Since he's like hilarious. a simple mind now. Yeah. Type it to the reptilian you know? brain. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That would be hilarious. That's what I'm hoping for. 
Oh, well, cool chapter. I don't have too much to say. I think this. I was exp- I was hoping this would be a, something a little bit deeper, but mm-hmm. I don't think it is. Yeah. Um, Doesn't make it a bad chapter though. Yeah, Brian, what did you think about this chapter? Um. Well, what I thought about this chapter, honestly, I didn't think much about it. Um. This chapter was um it felt a lot more hollow compared to more of the topics that Horikoshi talks about in the series like comparatively like this isn't nowhere near as fleshed out as like some of the more um like forefront issues that Hero Society has, you know? And that's because it wasn't it was easily the most uh neglected i'd say um he didn't really give this chance for them to be like kind of for this to hit harder you know like shoji didn't get his moment until now um it is one of those moments where it would have been nice to see more examples of uh heteromorphs being discriminated against in like before this happened in the series you know i feel like it would have been it would have made it hit harder um we didn't get enough of that like every time shoji was around it was there wasn't a single person who was like oh gross fucking heteromorph like nothing really nothing really came stood out like that so some of this kind of comes out of nowhere a little bit um spinner would bring it up every now and then but then again Stories are about showing, not just telling, you know? And if he told, if he showed a little bit more in the story, it would have been, this would have been way, way better. Uh, yeah. That's all my thoughts on it. Yeah. I have a rebuttal. Oh, yeah, go for it. Yeah, so, well, really, I just kind of added on to what Brian's saying. Even with Spinner's situation, He's just kind of been reduced to this mindless beast. And I don't really... I'm trying to find the metaphor in it. Because does he represent something like the blind rage and fury of... of angry people who... riot or protest? I'm, it's just weird. I don't understand the point. You know, he's just... It would have been nice to get a le- clear level-headed spinner discussing his ideology or giving his account but maybe we'll still get that yeah um i think you i think i I agree with you guys i think there's uh something interesting to be said i was thinking about um last week we talked a little bit about this very issue actually um in terms of like how we we have you we know that like this kind of thing this is a thing that heteromorphs go through in this world because, you know, we've been told, like, by Spinner before. But, I mean, the reason that you have, like, you know, the the way these, like, uh, self-insert things, like uh, allegories and stuff like that work, you know, people like Shoji, you know, Koda, Tokoyami, like, heteromorphs in general in this story, is that there's, these are all, like, things that we can see, that it separates, like, an essay from a fictional work, you know, is that we have these characters that we can relate to as people. You know, what Horikoshi has done between this chapter and the last chapter, it's not that the message is necessarily bad or wrong or he's not he's he's not doing it correctly. It's just he's kind of just preaching here. Um, and part of the th- thing about showing and not telling is that you have these characters that you can um, use like as evidence for your thesis, you know, and we, like Brian said, we haven't seen that, you know, we, we haven't seen that with Shoji. We've gotten hints that this is a thing in this universe, but if we had more like in story examples of this happening to characters that we care about, it would make this a little more significant and it would feel more like visceral to us. You know, if we had seen like examples of Shoji or Tokoyami and stuff getting discriminated against. And I think that's like there is something to be said about this rural argument that it happens more in rural areas. But, you know, 
it happens in cities too. But, and, you know, I feel like it's kind of a band-aid that Horikoshi uses is that the reason that we haven't seen it in story is because most of these characters live in a city and it apparently doesn't happen here. But that's that's just not true. Um, it, like, racial inequality happens everywhere. Discrimination happens everywhere. Um, even in, like, liberal areas like where we live in New York, it, it happens everywhere. So... I feel like it's kind of like a, a way to kind of sweep it under the rug why we haven't gotten this stuff before. Um, it's not particularly, it's like fine, it's whatever. Um, but yeah, it, it doesn't hit as hard because we haven't seen people that we've, or characters that we've spent time with right, and relate to and are invested in go through this already. And, you know, it would have hit harder if we had seen it. Um that kind of stuff is important, I guess. Um, I had another thought that I'm trying to think of, actually, uh, on top of that. Oh, uh, one positive thing I did like from this chapter, uh, a good message here. And, um, you know, this is kind of where it is helpful to have like a non uh, super specific to the real world thing. You know, it's a lot like the X-Men where uh, heteromorphs, mutants, stuff like that. It's all it, it can cross the spectrum of marginalized folks you know from like um there's like racial barriers there's uh you know uh gender and sex uh gender and sexual orientation and um you know disabilities even and uh i think there's something uh really nice about that m little moment where we see that shoji uh uses this body that was made that he was made to feel ashamed of to do good and save people and finding power in that I think that's a really good message to get across uh, to, to folks, you know? So I like that a lot about this chapter. That little moment was really cool. This little flashback. Um, I feel like if this has happened earlier, you know, that would have been great <laughs> if we are, because, you know, if this, if these pages came in like way before, it was like before this final battle, we would have had context. We would have like really had time to sit with Shoji and like feel these emotions with him and that are not mixed in the like heat of battle. Uh, and I feel like uh, all this stuff would have impacted us more a little. Uh, but overall, I do like that little story he told. And I love how like it kind of touches Coda as well, you know, bringing something out in him that we haven't seen. Uh, just a couple positives to go with, uh, all the negative. Um, but you know, overall I, I like it. Okay. Like Josh said, it's nothing like, uh, world breaking or anything, you know? Um, but I enjoyed it quite a bit. Uh, does anybody have any rebuttals? Anything else to say? No. Say again. Sorry. I Oh, my bad. I'm good on this chapter. All right. Well, <laughs> then that was my Hero Academia, I suppose. Uh, solid chapter overall. Let's let us know what you guys think in the comments. Um, yes. About what you think. Pretty decent. Pretty decent. It's a decent. Coda story. looked really cool at the end. Yeah. Art, obviously, as usual, on point. <laughs> my Hero Academia. Horikoshi is not going to let us down in the art department. Shoji looks really cool in a lot of panels. So does Coda. You know, another little plus. You know, sometimes we right. say nice things about my hero. Um, <laughs> but yeah, without further ado, um, I suppose that we should move onward. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. Uh, Jujutsu Kaisen. <laughs> this is Jujutsu Kaisen chapter 202 Blood and Oil. Um, all right, so last we left off was something completely different. Uh, last we left off, we learned a lot about what Kenjaku has been up to and the, uh, I guess, preparations that he's been making outside of Japan uh, for the Cullen game going forward. And it seems, that, it seems that he's, like, contacted various countries in order to uh, deploy their nation's troops into Japan uh, to kidnap Jujutsu sorcerers. Uh I think it's basically a setup so that they could, uh, ex so that Kenjaku can like exacerbate the amount of cursed energy that is being, uh, used, uh, throughout the world. And I think this chapter explains a little deeper 
as to how he plans to do that, I suppose. Um, but this chapter opens up with com- something completely different. Um, the very first page is a panel of uh, Rico Omanai, so, uh, who, if you remember, was uh, the star plasma vessel um, way back that was supposed to be uh, the next body for Tengen. Um, but she was uh, killed, unfortunately. <laughs> so they never got to do that. And Tengen, uh, according to this page where we start off, has not found a more uh, a, a, a new host with a potential like Rico's uh, outside of the person that Tengen is talking to, who is Yuki. Uh, Yuki Sukumono, I believe her name is. We've seen her a couple times throughout the series. Uh, I believe she was, like, a mentor to, to Megumi, if I remember. Uh, she has a very, like, I guess, uh, <laughs> like, Shanks-esque presence where she's, like, she pulls up every now and then and everybody's like, holy shit, it's Yuki Tsukumono. <laughs> so. Yuki? Yuki, what are you doing here? Can't she control Cursed Spirit to sound like that, too? Some Yeah, sh- yeah something like that. Um, but it turns out she's just having tea with Tengen, uh, who's basically they're talking about like why Tengen hasn't merged because there have been other star plus star plasma vessels, just nothing to the same level as uh, Rico. So, you know, he's never taken up and he's really just kind of after she died, he's just kind of accepted the circumstances Then <laughs> he's just like, I'm immortal and merging with a star plasma resets my flesh. So, you know, it had stopped simple evolution that uh, that's achieved through aging. Uh, and you know, if I evolve, I might destroy humanity, but, uh, having (laughs) failed to merge, even if I evolved and extend my will outside my body, I can use a barrier technique to preserve my sanity. So, you know, shit happens, I guess, is, uh, Tengen's whole attitude behind that. Um, Yuki's not a big fan of that. Um, she's just like, man, was it reasonable for you to, to, uh, to use children to work for you and just say it was okay with it. It was okay without merging. Um, and he's like, uh, and Yuki actually reveals that like, she would have allied with the children of the star. If like, I guess the bad guys, if their plan was to seize control, rather kill rather than kill star plasma vessels like her, I guess, cause mm. Yuki count says one. Um, Yuki can apparently hear the voices of the people who have merged with uh, Tengen. And she says that, like, she like she won't tell him what they're saying. And uh, I don't know. This is just, like, a weird, like, philosophical debate as to why. She's just like, if I tell you what becomes of the vessels who merge with you, you're, you'll use their wisdom to of your age to get defensive and act enlightened, right? And, uh... Tengen's like, she's like, I won't make it easy for you. As a farmer, star plasma vessel, that's my responsibility. And uh, he's like, well, I was hoping we could talk a little more. And I'm like, what the fuck is going on here, to be honest? <laughs> we'll right. It. Well, that was news. I didn't know that she was a former starlight. Yeah, that's that's news. Mm-hmm. But anyway, uh, just to get through the chapter, we cut over. There's like this actually really cool panels of just... I guess a barrier breaking down and um, through that barrier, we see uh, fucking Kenjaku breaking through. And I believe this is like, this is now present day, you know, during the culling games uh, that's happening. And he's just like broken up through the barrier that's above the tombs of the star corridor. And uh, the first thing Kenjaku says is like, you're no longer useful or interesting to me. And uh, who's there on the other side, but Choco. <laughs> And Chosa's like, I don't even know if this qualify this feeling qualifies as interest, but I have a vague desire to kill you. Um, and uh, he's va- uh, Kenjaku's just like, where's Tengen? And <laughs> this is Chosa's just like that talking thumb doesn't want to see you. You sure are a <laughs> man. Um, and Kenjaku's like, well, you're merely the expendable front line, so don't be overzealous. The culling game has already served its purpose. Um, and he says, the customary play- prelude to merging Japanese non-soldiers has finished. And Chosa... Right, you, the- you, you, you see roll ass character. Don't you dare <laughs> have, have some type of say-so in my ongoing. Exactly. Um, you are background fodder. Yeah. Uh, know your place, boy. <laughs> 
Uh, Where's my thumb friend? Where, <laughs> where is my thumb friend? Uh, so Choso's like, whoa, what's he talking about? Is it over? Are Yuji and the others all right? Uh, and uh, Kenjaku points out that uh, if he takes Tengen now, uh, they lose. Japan and maybe the whole world is done for. So he shows, he decides to show Choso one possible ending. Um, and he points out that Yuki Sukumo pointed out that optimizing cursed energy through Tengen means people become sorcerers. Uh, and he says that, uh, that f- according t- to him, that precedes uh, merger as mere verification via the culling game. So he doesn't, he, he says, he clarifies that, like, I've, I do not seek to rid the world of cursed uh, spirits. And um, she su- he's surprised that she suspected consumption of populace as a cursed energy resource. I don't know what that means. Uh, <laughs> and he's like, um, so, you know, he's just happy that they think alike, apparently. And um, he's he's basically saying that he's always considered the possibilities of cursed spirits along with sorcerers. And uh, that this new form of cursed energy could be attained by raising cursed spirits to the next level. So basically, his overall plan is to merge Tengen with uh, non-sorcerers in Japan that could, like, result in million hundreds of millions of people becoming cursed spirits with cursed energy and uh possibly form this giant cursed spirit monster thing uh and he just wants to see what that's like you know um he's just very curious and he's literally describes himself as feeling like a toddler holding a crayon and a blank sheet of paper so you know he's just excited for that and um Choso's just like well what's in it for you why are you doing this and uh, Kenjaku's like, well, it sounds like fun, but I won't know whether or not it is until it's done. What if the conglomeration of cursed energy looks like a funny face? Wouldn't that be hilarious? And uh, no warning. <laughs> the chapter ends with Choso uh, activating his piercing blood technique. Uh, and that's where the chapter ends. Uh, wow. Uh, lots of fun. Uh, Josh, what did you think of Jujutsu Kaisen chapter 202? Uh, it was a, a slightly confusing chapter for me at first because of the uh, uh, the conversation in the beginning. I didn't understand the hostility towards Tenjin, but until she, until Yuki mentioned that she was a previous Star Plasma vessel, so she probably feels like she's was looked at as a tool or something that is beneath him. I mean, beneath it being Tenjin. Um, so I, I guess I slightly understand the, uh, the hostility there. Um, but this conversation at the end with, uh, Kenjaku and, uh, the, uh, I forget the, the, the black blood kid. What's his name? The Pearson blood. Choso? Choso, yeah. I like that conversation. Um, I... I thought Kenjaku had a little bit more of a plan or at least a more pointed like result of this, but you know, being that he's kind of been reduced to like, uh, to this thought that he's doing all of this just to see what'll happen. Kind of jokerish. Um, you know, I guess that makes him a little less interesting in my opinion. I want to know what you guys think about that, but otherwise I don't really have too many other thoughts. This is a cool chapter. Hmm. Brian, what did you think if about this? Fight, oh, sorry. Oh, my bad. No, no, I just, I said, um, if, if they do fight next week, I hope uh, Choso doesn't get fucking wrecked. No, neither do I. <laughs> Pray your hands for that. Oh, I'll give him one of these, like the piercing blood. Um, Brian, what did you think? Choso's game murk next week. <laughs> Why'd you have to be so direct about it? Because he just is. You think he's going to beat Kenjaku? Well, he could survive. Maybe he'll lose, but he won't die. Negative. Characters die in this series. This isn't One Piece, okay? This is the end of Choto. Hey, you know, people die in One Piece. I'd say it's an 80-20 split. There's an 80% chance he dies, 20% he doesn't. Mm. That feels fair. Those those are the odds. Sounds arbitrary, but... 
I'm with it. All right. Well, I, um, I'd, I'd bet money that he that he dies. I think the rest of this chapter, though, it was a lot of uh, explanation, and I did get lost in it because I've been trying to catch up on Hunter Hunter. <laughs> And that kind of war, I was like, oh, shit, I got to read again. <laughs> yeah. I have to read more. <laughs> and uh, this does feel like after reading uh, Hunter Hunter a bit more, this does this series feels like Hunter Hunter light. That's what I realized. It's uh, it's Hunter Hunter with, um, I'd say, a little bit more dynamic fights. Um, but. I don't know. After watch, after reading a certain fight, I might even take that back Bro. because <laughs> holy fuck. Know, anyway, this is Hunter Hunter. Um, but yeah, Jujutsu Kaisen. You know, it's it's a uh, it's doing a bunch of setup for the fun action centered pieces that are going to come up soon. So um, this is just a lot of explanation, a lot of uh, exposition, and a lot of setup. So I'm excited to see where he goes, where Gege goes with this. Because uh, regardless, he's going to fucking pop off. He rarely ever misses. So um, we'll, we'll we'll see where it goes. Excited next week. Nice. Um, yeah, I really like this chapter. Um, I think, uh, I mean, honestly, here and there, I was a little confused. I feel like the dialogue is a little too vague <laughs> and in, in a kind of annoying way because uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of like stuff that we just don't know about Tengen, about, like, the Star Plasma stuff, um, I feel like, uh, you know, I, I found myself kind of, like, scratching my head a little bit of, between, uh, Yuko and, um, oh, Yuki and, uh, and Tengen's conversation, um, I wish he got a, a little more clarity on that, I guess, uh, it kind of comes out of nowhere as well, so it's kind of, uh, it left me a little confused after two weeks of not having Jujutsu Kaisen, uh, it's yeah. a bit of whiplash, to be honest, but um, not a bad thing overall. It's just maybe, uh, at worst, it's a little nitpick, to be honest. Um, the stuff with Kenjaku is interesting because I feel like I, we have a little more clarity as to why he has been bringing people from the outside into Japan. I think it's just to help with merging with Tengen here, um, with the uh, calling game as like a precursor. So, you know... he. He's just trying to get as many uh, non-sorcerer uh, people into Japan as possible to merge them uh, with Tengen and, like, create a bunch of cursed spirits. And I feel like that's the overall purpose of uh, the calling game in general. Uh, I don't know what how they're going to counteract that. I don't know if he, they have to, like, kill the people coming in or not uh, before it happens. But uh, I'm interested to see where it's going next uh luckily we have a year a week before uh jujutsu kaisen comes out i was about to say a year but uh <laughs> before jujutsu kaisen comes out next so we won't have to wait very long uh but yeah it's a lot of fun and um i'm i'm hoping choso makes that out okay i i uh i'm being optimistic and saying that maybe he will but you know 80 20 split chris hey, look i'm not a, split. i'm not a naive little boy all right I just like to keep hope alive. <laughs> Let's see. You want to make it 70 30. You can do that. I don't want him. Uh, okay. 10% more. Listen, Choso needs all he can get. He is fighting the main boss. Can, uh, all right. It's back, down, always... it's back down to 80 20 after that. <laughs> all right. Uh, Josh, has your mask always been blinking like that? <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Just no, it hasn't always been blinking like that. He's lying. Stop it from blinking. I mean, you can do whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> that was just off. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> very cool. Very edge. Your purge mask. I thought Brian was the purge one. Uh, it was the edgy one. And here you are. <laughs> anyway, I guess that's what Jujutsu Kaisen. We don't have any rebuttals, right? No. No. All right. Well, let's uh, move on then. Okay, so uh, this week we are uh, officially adding Hunter Hunter to the lineup. Uh, whoa, whoa, <laughs> whoa! So 
for those of you who don't know, Hunter Hunter started out as a story of uh, the main character Gone, uh, looking after looking for his father who disappeared uh, to become a hunter or to continue being a hunter and left him like a terrible deadbeat dad. Um, and uh, he proceeded to be the most deadbeat dad in all of anime history, which is saying something. Uh, so, you know, there's, uh, this, this series is long and very complicated, so we won't go through super nitty-gritty details. I just wanted to start off uh, the coverage of Hunter x Hunter this week by uh, giving overall impressions of the series. Um, I, you know, I believe that, uh, I think, I'm, I'm pretty sure that the three of us, uh, our experience with Hunter x Hunter is actually we're all uh, 2011 anime onlys uh, up to this point. Um, and we've all started reading the manga from when the anime ends. Uh, in preparation for the series, I have... I, I foolishly decided to like go all the way back and try to read it, but then that like munched up a lot of my time before uh, Hunter Hunter actually came out. So I kind of just like sped up to uh, where the anime ends and decided I'm going to read it all again retroactively. Um, but yeah, this uh, series to me is uh, pretty damn good. I feel like. Uh, pretty confident in jumping on the bandwagon here sometimes bandwagons are correct uh and in hunter hunter's case it's a really good series overall um uh there's uh a lot of really great moments one of the, my one of my favorite moments is in the uh, chimera ant arc uh that's mm -hmm. if you want to see like there's like moments i i, I wouldn't say that the chimera ant arc overall is pretty incredible it it is the perfect kind of like storm of what is so good and kind of not great about Hunter Hunter, you know, uh, with like this crazy amount of uh, over exposition, uh, but coupled in with these like really tense and dramatic moments. Like there's a moment where like Gone is basically like giving this Chimera Ant an hour to like heal someone. And it's one of the most tense things I've ever seen because he's just sitting there straight, like mad dogging her until like, you know, an hour passes um, and it's like so good, you know, and, you know, the there's these uh, there's, there's York New City. That's a great arc. And, you know, there's like Heaven's Arena. That's a great arc. And Heaven's Arena was so lit. So good, man. Um, so gone was lifting tiles and cracking people in the head with some shit. Yeah. Um, so, you know, quick impressions. Now we're into uh, the succession arc. And I'll give a little bit of a primer uh, from what I remember going forward. But uh, before we get into it, uh, does uh, Josh, do you uh, have any kind of like uh, introductory thoughts on your end of Hunter Hunter as we uh, begin to add it to the lineup and cover it weekly? As far as introductory thoughts go, this is a series that I really enjoyed um, strictly, not strictly, mostly because it's very in-depth. There's a lot of explanation. Um, there's a lot of creativity. Um, I, I love it all. I started reading it during the most recent arc a couple, like a few years ago when it was coming out in the Shonen Jump magazine before they broke it up into like, like individual series. And uh, I just liked it without even knowing any of the context. And like I mentioned previously, I watched the anime, so um, it's it's just very well thought, well well thought out, very rigorous. Uh, nice. And I, and I hope you you know I'm looking forward to talking about it. Yeah. Um, Brian... There was a moment during the Heaven's Arena arc. Okay. When uh, a character named Killua faces off against this this what uh, this friend that they made along the way, and there's a moment that's similar to Naruto, when uh, Rock Lee fights against Gara, right? He uh, takes he he asks uh, Guy Sensei if he could take the weights off, and he's like, "Yeah, go ahead," you know, and then he starts fighting Gara for serious real this time, you know, <laughs> you know how that goes. And there was also a moment during the Heaven's Arena arc in Hunter x Hunter where Killua again was fighting someone and the kid almost used this ability that we didn't know what it was at the time, but it ended up being something called Nen. 
that is like you know a core power of the series, and it was so edge. It <laughs> wasn't edge and cool. Maybe not edge, but it was cool because he was about to do something crazy, and his uh, even though he was losing, his his uh, his mentor was like, "No, don't do it." So it seems so mysterious and dangerous. Like, wow, like he can't even use this ability to like save him from losing the match. It must be a big deal. <laughs> That's all I needed to hear. Yeah. It turns out it is a big deal. Um, then is probably the most complicated power system I've ever fucking watched. Uh, so, and you know, there is a lot of stuff that, um, I feel Jujutsu Kaisen takes inspiration from, um, you know, Gege Akutami has, like, talked about how Hunter Hunter was one of his favorites growing up. I believe there's, like, interviews where he talked about it. And uh, the influence is pretty clear. Um, I would say that, like, uh, Togashi really, like, created a really, really good power system. And just by simplifying a tiny bit, uh, Gege Akutami may have perfected it. Because <laughs> I do find myself, uh, like, enjoying the simpler idea of the cursed energy a tad bit more um but yeah i mean nen is nen is a great power system and i love reading about it because every power is very unique and very fun uh to learn about um but yeah i mean I, that's my spiel about nen I, I forgot to mention it during my brief but um i guess we should uh throw it to brian brian what did you think about uh hunter hunter going in to the coverage of it um okay so um, I did start a, uh, Hunter Hunter binge a while ago where I just decided to start watching the series and, um, I started it, I start. I watched the anime and, um, I caught up and then I was like, damn, all right, time to read the manga. I can't wait to keep reading the, keep, keep catching up with the series, but the manga was locked behind the vault in Shonen Jump. And no. I just didn't feel like going through the hassle, trying to catch up. So I was like, ah, I guess I'll put it to the side for now. And then um, the series got, then the series got recontinued, and I'm like, oh shit, I guess. <laughs> and then they came out the vault, and I was like, oh fuck, <laughs> oh no, <laughs> yeah. I have no more excuses. Mm -hmm. So I started reading it, and holy shit, um, there's a clear, clear difference. Between the Chimera Nant Hunter Hunter arc and the arc complete and the arc directly after it. After that, it's not just like a shonen anymore. It's like so, so much world building going on at like all times. Everybody yeah. has different motives. Everybody has uh, different things they have, they're trying to complete. Um, everybody's trying to outsmart each other, not just with Nen, but with fucking their actual power in the world and their stake and their positions. It's fucking insane. Um, all of a sudden in this moment, like after the Kamehameha and Arc, the world just fucking opens up massively as a way to set up for the, um, the biggest arc to come up, which is the Dark Continent arc. Um... So basically all of this shit is like they have this huge, huge build up for that chapter. I mean, for that for that uh, arc. And I'm super fucking excited for it because the way they set it up was so, so fucking good. Like, even though Gone, the main character, isn't even involved in it, they still managed to, like, prop up so many other interesting characters to set up for something that he might not even be involved in. Let's be honest. Gon probably isn't going to show up in this arc. Neither is Kilua. So, and they're not even... <laughs> and honestly, if they don't show up in it, it makes sense. And that's something that most mangaka can't do. They don't have that kind of liber that, that liberty, you know? Yeah. Um, to have so many compelling characters that you could just be like, oh yeah, main character could take a seat for a few years we'll just we'll get back to him eventually like it's actually fucking nuts if you think about it not a i can't think of a single manga off the top of my head that can just remove the main character from the series and it gets better you know 
Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting like that because it's not the first time it's done it either. You could argue like York New City cuts out Gon like for a while and Kurapika is pretty much the main character for a, a good portion of this series, to be honest. Um, I fucking love Kurapika, by the way. Kurapika. Like, Kurapika. Kurap. Um, <laughs> I only call him that because that's how the announcer calls it. The narrator calls him. Kurapika. <laughs> Kurapika is drowning in a <laughs> What was it? <laughs> I forgot what it was. <laughs> oh, it... Uh, I'm gonna see if I find it. Kurapika is, dry. but anyway, uh, I guess to buy time, I'll find fast, it. Um, he, yeah, Hunter Hunter. Wait, <laughs> did you find it? Kurapika is now drowning in an indescribable emptiness. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's wow. the one. Uh, hold on, I I think I could play it for the crowd. <laughs> My, uh. Uh, is not drowning. Okay, found it. Hell yeah. Kurapika is now drowning in an indescribable emptiness. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Kurapika is now drowning in an em- <laughs> indescribable, <laughs> in indescribable empty- emptiness. <laughs> emptiness. Can yeah. you run it one more time? Yeah, once. <laughs> Why not? Uh, narrator Sama, for those of you who don't know, is a very prominent character in Hunter Hunter, and uh, we get these uh, little gems from him sometimes. Kurapika is now drowning in an indescribable emptiness. <laughs> and mind you, the music is so fucking hype during yeah. this moment too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I wish yeah. I wish whenever I felt fucking depressed that heavy rock music would play every time as well. But it does, Brian. <laughs> it does in your heart. <laughs> uh yeah. Brian is currently crying his balls off. <laughs> <laughs> Christian is currently <laughs> weeping in the fetal position. <laughs> Brian doesn't know whether Perfect. everything will be okay or not. <laughs> yeah, we all need sad rock music accompaniment. <laughs> uh, but anyway, I guess I, we could uh, get into the recap in general um, by uh, closing it off by thinking Hunter Hunter is not your... He's not your granddad's shonen manga. This very much is a very... It, there's this term in Bakuman that they were trying to aim for, which is the non-mainstream battle manga. This was it. I feel like this is where they got that idea. Just like a series. It's not a standalone standalone. No, and it's also like not a particularly optimistic story. Uh, characters really get knocked down a peg continuously. Uh, it's it's not particularly optimistic, and it's very complicated. Uh, and very kind of philosophical. I would say there's like a lot of like value in the Chimera and Arc just on a, on a thematic level alone um, that other series don't really tackle cry. with as much honesty. Uh, Did you guys almost cry? <laughs> I didn't almost yeah. cry, but I was like, damn. I almost cried. Yeah. Meru I, I felt the heaviness in my eyes. Not as I watched it, but when I read it today. Mm hmm. Um, okay, so I'm going to try to, the best of my ability, recap, in short, I'm going to leave out a lot of stuff, because it's impossible not to. I'll be here all day if I try to recap every little thing that's happened since, oh um, my god, narratively, when the anime ends to this point, because that's about 50 chapters, and that 50 chapters, if you really write out the summary, feels like it's more like 100 chapters, because a lot of shit happens. Uh, so, you know, obviously spoilers ahead, uh, for Hunter Hunter from chapter 340 onward. Um, basically the anime leaves off when, with Gon, uh, finding his father, freaks. spending some time, Gon freaks, finding his father and, um, having some time with him and realizing that he can no longer produce aura. Uh, there has been this big, uh, chairman election thing that's been going on that has gotten, you know, in Hunter Hunter fashion, very complicated for no reason. 
Uh, but at the end of the day, one of the 12 Zodiacs, which are, I guess, like the the hunters closest to Netero, who were who was the previous leader of the Hunter Association, uh, one of them was uh, nominated, the Dog Zodiac one. I forget her name already because... Cheetle. Cheetle. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Brian. Uh, because there's so many names to remember. And uh, I'll explain more about that because there's more names than you think that you have to remember, kind of. Um, so basically, after that, it's revealed that there, that Netero had a son. His name is Beyond Netero. Pretty fucking cool <laughs> name, to be honest. Yeah. Uh, and his whole thing is that he wants to travel the dark continent. He wants to hunt in the dark continent, uh, which is this unexplored world. Apparently, the world of Hunter Hunter is just like a small, that we've seen so far, is a small microcosm of the rest of the planet in which has been mostly unexplored because it is just like home to various fucking pathogens and airborne diseases and fucking giant monsters among other things. Uh, And it's been expressly forbidden not to go after several voyages have left multiple hundreds of casualties. So they tend not to try to go out there, but Beyond is trying to exacerbate things to a point where he's forcing a lot of people to go. Uh, he's forcing like the general government of the world of Hunter Hunter, known as the V5, to participate in this. Uh, and the way he's done that is that he has uh, gone to this f- uh, country called Kaken, I believe is the country, or is that the family name? I don't know. Kakin. The Kakin Empire. Yeah, so he goes there and he makes this guy uh, basically the uh, a, a hero and a king, and he uh, convinces them to accompany him, like to use their resources to take him to the Dark Continent. Uh, the V5, which is the rest of the world that is not connected to the Kakin, uh, they catch wind of this and are like, ah, you shit. You know, we can't just let them be the pioneer we got to be attached to that in some way so they invite the kakin into the v5 which now becomes the v6 uh and intend to i guess try and capture beyond before he goes in and instead of uh beyond going in alone they try to uh circumvent him so they're the ones accompanying kakin i believe that's the plan of the v5 (laughs) but uh what they do is, is that like the, the, the nitty gritty of the plan is that they because uh Gein, uh Jean uh Gon's father, who was the boar zodiac, and um Pariston, who was the rat zodiac, they're gone. So there's two holes to fill in the in the zodiac chairs. Uh so they bring on uh Leorio and uh Kurapika to take their spots. Uh they send Kurapika onto the ship that's going to take um, Kaki, the Kakin royal family from the regular world to a new continent that's right before the uh, the dark continent. Um, and from real there, quick, oh, did I miss something? Uh, the I think it I think it would be nice for him to know why Leorio was chosen, and that's because oh, yes, he was he was extremely popular because he actually punched Ging in the face. Yes. <laughs> um and that actually led him pretty far into mm-hmm. um the like the voting process for po- potentially becoming uh the new chairman of the Hunters Association and he only bowed out because uh Gong uh, who was in- incredibly injured because of Nen um he he ended up coming out fine. And then he kind of pulled out his his race in the in the Hunter Association. So that's why he was chosen. And then as a result of Leorio getting chosen, he recommended um, what's his name? Kurapika to yes. be uh, a, the a part of the Zodiacs as well. Yes, please. Uh, if I miss anything, let me know, because, uh, again, lots of information that I read in less than a week. Uh, so uh, I might I might forget things here and there. Okay, so that's the plan. Basically, they stole away Kurapika to uh, to to try and infiltrate the Kakin. He and a couple of our hunters, uh, all of which who we've seen before, um, Hanzo the ninja, uh, Biscuit who trained Gon and uh, and Kilua in Green I- Green Island, uh, 
the I forget one one of the guys is there that taught uh Ki, uh Karapika his nen. He's also there. I forget his name right now because he doesn't show up very often uh in this arc so far. Um but he's there and there's this Pompadour guy from York New City that I remember as well, whose name I know, whose name are I'm not exactly certain of. Um There's a few characters oh, Melody, from York New. Melody as well as Yeah, there. Melody's there too. Um mm-hmm. who is like the closest uh confidant to Karapika during the York New City arc. Um she's there as well. She's part of the mafia, right? That, yeah, that Karapika she's runs. Part the, she's part of the mafia that Karapika now leads actually. Um so they sail they 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 sail away under the guise of the princes of the Kakin uh, dynasty, their bodyguards. So there are 14 of them in all. Uh, and it was basically a race to for all hunters to basically get in. Uh, the V5 and um, Beyond's people and the Hunter Association have all kind of like infiltrated the Kakin in their own way. Uh, but, you know, they Karapika really needed to get on. So him... He, he, his plan was to like guard over the ninth prince. There are fourteen princes in all. Uh, Ka, uh, Karapika ended up with the fourteenth prince at the end of the day because uh, it was kind of like a ruse where they set up this uh, application process so that Karapika would assume that he is applying for uh, the ninth prince. None of the other hunters are really certain when they apply to become a, a bodyguard for the princes. They don't really know who they're bodyguarding until they get there. Um, so Karapika is guarding the 14th prince, who is the youngest prince. Uh, she is still a baby, actually. Her name is Prince Wobel. Uh, and she, uh, Karapika basically communicates pretty much with the mother, who is the Queen Oito. Um, Melody ends up... Uh, I don't remember the name, the numbers of the princes in order, but like there's... The other hunters end up with their princes as well. They all are, are all on there, on there, and they learn of this uh, kind of disturbing thing that's happening. Uh, it's a big right. old voyage, first of all. It's not just the princes. There are also uh, a, a bunch of regular people that are also on this boat uh, as kind of like a show to <laughs> like, you know, for like the for um, I guess like the cocking. Uh, royalty to like say that we're providing a whole new life for people on this new continent uh so we're bringing people along and changing their lives i guess like kind of as a feel-good story if i remember right um but secretly it is uh, like a darker reason there's like a weird sacrificial element to it um there are these factors involved with the princes uh they don't know that nen is a thing but they do get uh, involved in this ritual in which they have to give a drop of blood and put it into the cedarn and uh, they are given a nen beast to watch over them uh, throughout the duration of the voyage uh, each one of them has basically it's really a, dope shit really dope yeah they each of them gets a, an invisible animal basically to watch over them while um, you know protect them and guard them that they can't see other princes can't see and they don't these beasts don't attack or kill people unless I guess they're uh, protecting it like only in self-defense for the most part. Um, but they, yeah, they, they don't, they're passive for the most part. Exactly. Um, so Karapika learns about this whole thing and learns that there's someone's out there trying to kill his prince basically. And he's like, ah, oh, shit. So, you know, in order for like Karapika to get the means to the end, that is the whole reason he really the means for you. that he yeah. actually takes this on and become and joins the Hunter Association Zodiacs and all that stuff is to uh, kill the fourth prince of the Kakin, uh, Surrender Niche, something like that. <laughs> His name is long and complicated for no reason. <laughs> Surrender Rich. Mm-hmm. He easily has the most ridiculous name out of all the princes all for them. no reason. Out of all of them, he has the hardest out, name. Like, like, all right. So <laughs> there was a few pages where they were explaining the names of all the princes and shit. And I shit you not. It, for me, it felt like Barry, the first prince. <laughs> Benjamin is the Ash- first prince. <laughs> Ashley, Camille? the second prince. Okay, yeah. Camille Third is the second pr- prince. Third prince. Uh, Winston, fourth <laughs> prince. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> fifth prince bob <laughs> yeah. that's what it felt like to me <laughs> yeah it is like that um I don't remember all the princes' names because there are 14 of them, and we don't spend a whole lot of time with a lot of them. Um, but yeah, there's this one prince. The fourth prince on this uh, in this lineage is uh, in possession of the uh, Scarlet Eyes of Karapika's clan, which is the incentive for Karapika to take on this mission in the first place, uh, to finally get the last of uh, his family's eyes back. Uh, and what is he doing with the eyes? By the way, I forgot. I like, he is he th- just like taking them? Yeah, he's just taking. He just them. has them. Yeah, he just has them. He's not trying to let people take his family's eyes, um, which is fair, I guess. Um, but yeah, that's why he's there. But he's caught up in this whole royal family drama, uh, and it, it is low key convenient for him because now he can kind of kill the fourth prince with impunity. There, uh, there is a. <laughs> way that he gets what he wants uh and he could use force to do it and it would be not a super high crime depending if he plays his card right um so there has been a lot of complications uh as we know uh basically then the concept of nen becomes public knowledge uh during this voyage as like the battles start to happen and um and princes start dropping uh, there's only been two that have been killed so far. Um, the first one went down and, uh, they were killed by Nen of some sort, which caused Karapika to have to kind of like make some deals in a long and, and roundabout way to kind of teach the other prince's guards that don't know Nen, teach them Nen so that they can guard their princes and, you Wait, know, there could be um, a playing ground. I could be wrong about that. I don't the know first prince that died is the dude who choked out the lion. No, he's is still that what you're alive. Talking about, or is it just another? No, prince? Benjamin's okay. still alive. Okay. It's uh, it, it was a uh, uh, a female prince. She um, she was like choked out in her bed. I don't know if you got that far, but I didn't uh, get there yet. I just finished the Corlo fight. Yeah. Well, well, I guess that's another thing to explain because that's actually important for the chapter that we're going to cover. Uh, while all this shit is happening, all this like crazy, uh royal family drama game of thrones type shit is going on uh in the outside world in the heavens arena we get a really like long battle between crollo and hisoka which was like i guess a long time coming at this point um and i'm not gonna go crazy on the details there because uh it has to do with a lot of explaining and uh very complicated abilities but it does end with uh, Krolo actually killing Hisoka technically. Um, Hisoka only survives the battle because he uses Nen, like in the last moments, he like does this Nen thing that activates after death and it kind of starts his heart again using his uh, his gum Nen thing. Bungee gum. Yeah, his bungee gum resuscitates him post his death. And um, yeah, he I lost. think what it was, I think what it was is that he used his Nen before he died. Exactly. And yeah. then Nen being and then the Nen used to repair his body by a doctor uh, restarted his Nen, which then allowed the Nen to pump his heart, his lungs and his, and his brain or some shit like that. Yes. And then he healed himself up using, you know, his like Nen powers. So he's not a, a third degree burned corpse man. Um so, and immediately after doing that, he uh, gives a pretty epic ultimatum uh, to Machi, I think her name is, the, the one that usually heals him up, uh, and says, like, tell the spiders that it's on site, and uh, I'm going to fight to kill them as soon as I see them. So, you know, let them know to square up as soon as they, if they see me. Uh, and he follows that up immediately by killing two phantom troop members, Corto P and, um, and Shalnark. Uh, they're dead. <laughs> so ever since Hunter Hunter started, that is now four phantom truth, phantom troop members that are dead. Uh, Uvogin, Pakonoda, uh, Shalnark and Corto P. Uh, yeah, they're dead. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, it seems that Hisoka has uh, escaped onto the very boat that Karapika is on. Uh, the Phantom Troop also has uh, snuck onto the boat, but they were 
already going to do that on business. They were going to go there and steal some treasure from uh, the royal family. Uh, but now they've caught wind that Hisoka is also on the boat. So No uh, way. Wait, what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And of course, we all know no this. No way. Okay. What? <laughs> yeah. Not only that. That is so fucked up. <laughs> not only that, you know who else is on this boat? Who else has beef with them? Kurapika fucking is also on Kurapika, the Kurapika, <laughs> yeah. So that's fucking crazy. So all of the remaining spiders are currently on the fucking boat. With oh, Kurapika but there's somewhere. also one more person. Who? Gene. Uh, I, I don't think Gene is on the boat. He is on the boat. He is on the boat. Oh, yeah. Gene oh. is I'll on the boat? Know. Why? Yes, he is. I guess Gene is on the boat. I don't know. Him. Because he wants to get to the continent. No, I know, so. but I thought he was coming later. Yeah, so. but that's... Are they going to the continent? No, they go, Well, the plan is to stop off at this new continent first to refuel and then go into the new into the dark continent. Um, so is Beyond on this boat then? Yeah, but, you know, in the meantime, the family is having their crazy uh, kill-each-other ritual to decide who the next king of Kakin is going to be. So, <laughs> you know... I guess the time limit is that all these princes have to be killed before they reach the new continent and then move on into the dark continent. Uh, that's the idea anyway, for the new king to be chosen by the time they arrive, because this is all happening in secret. They're not just like like squaring up out there. It's got to be done very sneakily <laughs> and within the confines of the law, technically, because uh, what they're doing is uh, super duper illegal because there's a lot of murder involved. So, I guess that's where we find ourselves currently, since Hunter Hunter has returned. Uh, there are a lot of plot points that have sprung up. It's gotten even more complicated, believe it or not, because now we are shifting to the drama that is happening outside of the royal family with the regular people that are on the boat as well. Uh, and it turns out that there are a bunch of illegitimate children of the king that are also on this boat, and they're <laughs> they're fucking mafia people it seems they run their own crime syndicates and they're Jesus all Christ. they all hate the royals as well so they're <laughs> oh my god everybody wants to kill each other on his boat uh actually yeah, brian you're not far off because uh in a previous chapter um the the cow zodiac who is on the boat is talking about how there's been a lot of murder on the boat lately mazai right yeah Mizai that's the name has been talking about there's a lot of murder on the boat lately and uh, if they don't nip this in the bud soon it's going to spread to the lower floors and there will just be all out chaos and war <laughs> and uh, this whole <laughs> ship will fucking sink because of the violence that will spring up uh, especially now that there is just a mass murder walking walking around in the lower floors uh, killing off mafia members uh, it's not great <laughs> so now, on top of that the spiders are around looking to off Hisoka so a lot of shit is going down in this. A uh, lot of uh, paths are converging. And Hisoka's around trying to off them. And also Karapika is around trying to off them as well. Well, Karapika doesn't know that the spiders are on board. He's Yeah, but once he does know, that's... Yeah, yeah it, it's on site for him too. <laughs> yeah, lots of things. And Karapika is actually... I don't know if you explained this yet. But Karapika's entire Nen ability... Like, like, there's a huge chunk of his power that's dedicated just to killing the spiders. Yeah. Um. Like, if he uses this ability on literally anybody else, he will die because of it. That's how strongly he hates these dudes. Yeah. Um. Another thing I neglected to mention, uh, involving the fourth prince. Uh, we are, we, as I mentioned before, Karapika's whole goal is to get his family's eyes. From the fourth prince. The fourth prince has been learning Nen from his bodyguard, who can use uh, who can use Nen and has been teaching him Nen. He is catching on incredibly fast, and he is actually super duper powerful with Nen, it turns out. He has been learning at a higher rate than apparently anybody in this series has. And his ability is seeming to start to take hold, and is that he can start to see 10 seconds into the future like the more he looks. So he was able to like, there's this little sub story where his, uh, where his bodyguard knowing what a piece of fucking shit he is, is realizing how strong he's getting and is like, Oh no, this guy can't learn then. <laughs> 
so I must kill him. Uh, <laughs> and there is a scene where she shoots him in the head, but then it turns out that she didn't. Like, she blinks, and then he's gone, and he's, like, right behind her. And the reason being is that he saw in the future that he was going to shoot her, and he just kind of, like, moved out of the way. But because of his ability, he, like, kind of, like, it's a weird alternate reality thing where he, like, branched off for a second. And yeah. she saw him kill her. She saw herself kill him for a split second. And then it cut to the reality that is, which is that he dodged it. It's very hard to explain uh, because he's only used it once so far. And it's a still developing ability. So point being he's getting broken right now <laughs> he's wait he pit did he are they saying that he picked up on n faster than marrow yes he's so fat like it's taken they've been on the boat for like two weeks and even within the two weeks he's just like advanced very far like two weeks karapika teaches a lot of the guards nen in two weeks like he learned half of that in less time basically so he's he's just so fucking good he's just got a natural aptitude for nen so wait, what kind of nen does he fall under then? He has a special. He's a specialist. Oh yeah. shit! <laughs> and he's supposed to be like pure evil or something like yeah. that too. Yeah. So specialists are the ones that do everything, right? Specialists are they don't they don't fall under any particular category. They just like they just have a power that is unlike others. I guess like you know. Yeah, Karapika. Karapika is a specialist, is a specialist because you know. His but net. Karapika is only a specialist when he's an emperor time, though, right? Well, when he uses his ability as a specialist ability, so. No, I think I think. All right, so correct. I'm pretty sure that whenever he uses Emperor Time, that's when he's a specialist. But every (laughs) but regularly, he's a other thing like a conjurer or something. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, he conjures the chains, but like all those powers that he has is that's his specialist attribute, I guess. Yeah, he's a conjurer normally, and then when he uses uh, Emperor Time, that's when he is a he's a specialist. Yeah. By the way, in case we didn't mention, uh, Kurapika's uh, Kurapika comes from a clan with special eyes, and. <clears throat> Kurapika. As a uh, as a result of that, Kurapika's eyes are uh, special. In fact, that when he activates them, uh, they they when he's in a very emotional state, he activates his eyes, which then allows him to uh, essentially become a Nen god of, of sorts, where he could do literally whatever he wants uh, with yeah. with his Nen. Yeah, and it's involuntary. And he calls it Emperor Time. Yeah, it's involuntary too. So he had even in this arc, he has to put on contact so he won't be like sussed out by people. Um, but in any case, I think that's uh, so far what happened last chapter is that uh, we are learning that some of the uh, members of the Phantom Troop uh, have allied themselves with the like mafias within the bottom floors to find Hisoka uh, in exchange for killing off another mafia head. Uh, but the first things first, the, the efforts are more to find Hisoka first. Um, so we open with a couple of uh, side characters that n- whose names I don't remember because you are expected, apparently, to know not only, like, the side characters, but the side characters of the side characters. <laughs> like, all of the Royal Guards have names and abilities that I have to remember, and I, I don't. I just don't. Uh, I remember this guy. Like, there's this long-haired guy who's like a mafia dude. His ability is that he can turn animals into technology. Um, and basically, he just had a scuffle with uh, with a guy and uh, killed him off. But, you know, he's suddenly alive. But you see there's this Nen order around him. He's getting investigated by, uh, I guess, the military police that's on the boat. And... Um, you know they're they're trying to clear up what happening because there was just like literally a fight right before this chapter, and um, one of the troopers goes up to the the mafia guy and is like, "How much would you pay for info on the whereabouts of the Haley boss?" Um, and you know, fifty million is the price, uh, and they kind of negotiate for a while, um, and 
they basically agree to a price and uh he says please like wait here i'll bring the money uh but you'll escort me to the boss's place personally and they're like all right cool um the guy that he was scuffling with walks away but it turns out um he is being possessed by a former GU member, like a former member of the mafia that was killed and is using a Nen ability that is activated beyond death. Uh, that is called La Vie en Rose, which, uh, uh, La Vie en Rose. The ability is activated upon the death of Misha, who was a cleaner activates and it activates in general when a member of the GU commits murder. So it basically possesses a corpse uh, until it can be disposed of quietly. And uh, that's the uh -huh. ability. Uh, meanwhile, there are these other mafia members walking around looking for Hisoka. Um, wait, wait, hold on real quick. Um, can you explain the Nen that activates after death a little bit better? Because I know it was introduced during the Krolo fight, right? Yes. But, like, I don't really get it. Like, it. so when you get resur like, when your Nen gets used after death, it's stronger, right? Yes. Like it becomes stronger, so that's why um that's why Hisoka is stronger now because like his bungee gum is stronger now, right? No, what happened what uh, I like, don't cuz if you if the Nen gets stronger after death, then it's then that means Hisoka is like much stronger now, right? That's it's Nen that that's activated after death, not necessarily like it's stronger after death. Um I, from what I understand, you can basically use nen you can like store away or like repurpose uh, a, a bit of your nen to be used after death as uh Krolo mentioned that like his ability can be used after he dies technically uh it activates after his death as well um i uh as far as hisoka goes the way i understand it is that he used he he put a bunch of his uh bungee gum into his heart uh with the intention that uh upon activation of the Nen by touching Machi's Nen, Nen, it would restart his heart again and restart his lungs and all that stuff. So wow. I guess uh, I think of it as a landmine, I guess, like leaving it before you die, like a trap before you die or something uh, that can be activated after you die. Uh, so I hope that I explained that well. But there's a yeah, lot of that makes more sense. I'm trying to. So, so you could use it to like bring yourself back in Hisoka's case, or you could use it to fucking send a middle finger to whoever kills you. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Yeah, I guess it depends on your ability. You know, like uh, in theory, it's plausible that you can use like the uh, the buoyancy of the bungee gum to restart like your heart. You know what I mean? Mm hmm. Uh, so I think you got the idea generally, um, that it's just basically, you could use it as a middle finger or to resurrect yourself after death as a countermeasure, uh, all part of the, uh, ever growing tapestry that is Nen <laughs> as a power system. Uh, but in any case, uh, we continue onward. There's the two other, uh, mafia members. One has a Nen ability to control their blood after they cut, they've been cut, um, and this other one who has the ability, if she hits you, uh, your inner voice comes out that only she can hear. So she can ask you a question. And she d she displays it here, actually, where she walks up to a guy and is like, is your name Hisoka? And the guy's like, who? You got the wrong? And she just punches him. <laughs> and you Brand see that, guy. like, it says, no, I am not. And, you know, it just, like, whoever she punches will just, like, answer her question, like, through her nan ability, I guess. Like, She'll get it's basically a mind reading power that she activates after punching you. Uh, and they're just walking around trying to look for him. And lo and behold, they find him. They find Hisoka. He's just walking around and he looks very different because he has his hair down and he's wearing regular kind of clothing. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and he doesn't have all the stuff on his face. Yeah, he doesn't look like a fucking weird clown. So she walks up to him and is like, uh, uh, he's like, are you Hisoka? And uh, Hisoka looks down at her like, who are you? And she's like, Lynch. And you? And she tries to punch him, but nothing comes out. And I guess with Conqueror's Hockey, he just puts her down. <laughs> and uh, she's like, oops, sorry. That was a reflex. Uh, so what do you want? Uh, and uh, the other guy that was accompanying this mafia girl is like, whoa, shit. He's got this overwhelming aura. It's like the devil. And Hisoka's like, 
I guess you didn't hear me. I thought I was the one asking questions here. Um, right. And uh, the blood guy is like, I don't know the details, but the mafia is looking for you. If you want to know more, then come with us. And uh, all we see is Hisoka looking Hisoka-ish. And um, and the blood guy starts sweating. Uh, and then we uh, cut over to, like, I guess this mafia guy is still looking for, uh, for Hisoka, you know, looking around and asking people for uh, information. Uh, there's this whole page where this old, this guy's talking to this old lady, um, talking about how there's like kind of a gag order in effect, uh, because of like all the drama that's been going on. Uh, Mm. so, you know, these mafia guys are looking around, uh, there's a lot of thinking going on by one of the, uh, head bosses of the mafia, they're just like the Haley. There's a Haley assassin going around. His ability, he could just like open these weird portals and stuff and warp from place to place. Um, so you know, they're um, he's kind of in in a short way of saying it. He's like hoping that like Hisoka and the spiders kind of knock each other out because you know the spiders are kind of like threats in their own way. Um, yeah. Speaking of which, we cut over to a couple of the Phantom Troop hanging out, uh, specifically uh, Finks, Phaeton, and uh, and Nobunaga. Uh, they're hanging out with the Mafia dudes. Uh, oh fuck! I haven't heard Nobunaga's name in so long. Yeah, he's here Jesus. too. Um, so they're just like trying to figure out what to do next. Uh, Nobunaga suggests that they split into pairs. Uh, and and search outside, but um, Franklin is around here somewhere. He suggests getting Franklin and picking him up. And um, Finks is like, eh, I don't think Fink, uh, Franklin will want to run around here. You know, he hates confined spaces. Um, oh. He's like, ah, then I'll team with Frank and Franklin. You guys stay here. You know. Um, but uh, all of a sudden they are um, met briefly by the serial killer from the Hay Lee. Uh, he knocks on the door and apparently abducts a bunch of dudes uh, from the mm-hmm. Haley army. Uh, and then like his hand starts to like split open the door and he's like, it's not yeah. like you, you guys should, wa- you guys could wipe out, wipe out the char, bust down that door and slaughter all the loaded rotten scoundrels in the upper tiers. Couldn't you? Uh, he's like, I'm kind of disappointed. He says, your wiki page is that you're diabolical, but I guess that was exaggerated. Want me to edit your entry for you? And uh, Nobunaga pulls out his sword. He's like, sure, go ahead. Just say that we show no mercy to dudes who tick us off. So I guess... Nobunaga! Nobunaga, and that's where the chapter ends. Uh, I guess we're going to get a battle between the Phantom Troop and this serial killer that we've seen uh, throughout the lower floors. Uh, Josh, you read this chapter, right? (laughs) Yes. Hell yeah. What do you think about Hunter Hunter chapter 290 uh 392? It's been one hell of a day reading a lot of Hunter x Hunter. <laughs> <laughs> um It was cool seeing the fan troop, you know, towards the end. I didn't I didn't think we'd get a a fight with them like on the ship. You know, I thought whatever would happen it would be on the other side of the journey, right? But there's so many storylines going on. I'm most interested in what's going on with the princes and stuff, you know, with their nimbies. One of them has has a nimbies that's basically wheezing. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Yeah, that's the coolest one. Well. Well, you'll see, um, I guess. <laughs> The fourth print is going to be the next major villain. He can, like, see the future. Oh, yeah. And his Nen Beast is really, like, intimidating. It looks straight up at you. I think if you lie, it'll kill you or something like that. Yeah, Pretty it crazy. is, actually. Yeah, I think that's, like, his, his Nen, Beast, Nen Beast's ability. It, like, watches after him. It's weird. Mm-hmm. It's a real gross one, too. It has a head in its mouth. It's a lot. It's a very dramatic power. Yeah, it's very dramatic. Well said. Um, other than that, I, I really don't have too much. I need to get into a rhythm. 
you know, with the series. I'm just kind of hoping to to see what happens, happens next week and that it doesn't take a break for another few years. <laughs> I think there's a plenty of um, material already, like, finished for this run of chapters, however long it lasts. So, you know, uh, here's hoping. Um, Brian, you wouldn't... Uh, you're, like, still a little behind, right? You wouldn't have... Yeah, I I I still haven't even read that chapter yet. That's fair. Uh, I guess I'll go. I, Brian freaks. Brian freaks. Um, I'll be honest. Uh, this stuff with the Phantom Troop is uh the stuff that I've like read through the fastest because it was kind of like uh, getting to crunch time in terms of uh, adding the series to the lineup. Uh, mm-hmm. so. There's like a little bit of uh, spotty details uh, here and there. I'll probably like take another uh, glance over uh, to see. Uh, But yeah, like Josh said, there are just so many storylines in this that you have to keep track of and so many fucking characters. Like I thought One Piece was bad, (laughs) but you really got to like kind of pay attention to every single person on this goddamn ship or else you're going to be lost. Um, Yeah, I thought Hisoka was dead. Nope, (laughs) he's out there. Um, yeah, so, I mean, honestly, I'm actually happy to see the Phantom Troop. I think, obviously, they're just a fun group to keep track of in this series. They're a fun group of characters in general. Like, one of the better villain groups that I'm aware of, uh, in the last few years. So, uh, I'm excited to see how this goes for them. So much is converging on this, uh, on this boat in terms of Karapika's story with the Phantom Troop and... Uh, the eyes that are on the ship and all that stuff. So I wonder if like after this, somehow we're going to shift off, shift off of Karapika and somehow get Gon and Kilua back into the spotlight. Um, mm. Given how like theory, like they could end Karapika's storyline on this fucking boat right here. If uh, he manages to kill all the spiders on the boat right now, um, it could go that way. You're right. Yeah. Uh, there, there just seems to be like so much story left to Hunter Hunter, you know, and given that it's just come back off of hiatus, and I'm glad that it has been. Um, I wonder how long this story is gonna go, man. You know, it could be like another like five years before like the story is complete. Yeah. Um, you know what's funny? You know what's really really funny is that. There is a whole ass big ass villain that has yet to be even mentioned yet. Remember Gyro? Don't, don't, oh my god, Gyro. Listen. He's nobody. My he god. Turned into he an said, ant. He literally he turned into an ant and got killed. He was no, fodder. No, he's still an ant. he's still alive. As an ant? Yeah, as an ant. No, and they mentioned and the lion they, wasn't the lion wasn't Giro. No, yes, what are was. you talking about? He's a, he's a crime boss. So essentially, Gyro is supposed to be stronger than Meruem, and him and Gon are fated to meet. So there's that. Um, and apparently they were so, they were so close to meeting. And if they did, no. I forget what happened. I forget what the narrator said, but it was something along the lines of shit would have gone down. Jeez. Well, there's also, so like- there's, there's a whole ass big bad that still hasn't even like, we haven't even seen his face yet. Yeah. I bet Jero ain't got shit on the fourth print. I don't know, man. <laughs> he's in Meteor Yogi. City right now. He's in Meteor City right now. The only reason he's allowed to live there right now is because the Phantom Troop aren't there. I think when the Phantom Troop go back, it's not Meteor City anymore, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> That's what I think. You think it'll be Gyroville? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> It'll probably be Gyroville, yeah. <laughs> well, you know that the Phantom Truth are gonna are gonna uh this isn't that big of a deal their way through him. Honestly, think it's be I'm kinda Gyroville. excited because Nobunaga, I don't think we ever got Nobunaga's ability. 
Like his Nobunaga's his, ability is that wait, he never uses that ability at the atomic no. level. I don't think we get he's atomic samurai. Really? He never uses that's what ability? atomic samurai no, was. We've never seen him there. use his like nen ability. I don't think we have at least. I'm trying I to go back. We when he fought things. against Boros. Boros. Let me see. Oh well not Boros, but you know oh, the uh man. yeah, I get it. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, we've seen uh Finks, we've seen Phaeton. We've seen a lot of them. We, we haven't seen Franklin's. We haven't seen Nobodaga's. Uh, we've seen uh, we've seen most of the Phantom Troops powers, but not them. Honestly, pretty stoked to see it if we do get to see it this chat this uh, this arc. Um, but all we know is that he's an enhancer. That uh, makes sense. <laughs> that's what we know at the moment. Yeah, but we don't know just how good at Nen he is. Yeah. Well. Uh, overall, I like this chapter quite a bit. Uh, I'm excited to, for what comes next. I suppose we should move onward, though. We've been on Hunter x Hunter for a while. Welcome to the lineup. Uh, if you are uh, in the market for more Hunter x Hunter coverage, uh, subscribe. We'll be doing it every week now uh, for as long as it's here. And hopefully that's for a long time. Um, but without further ado, we, can, uh, we should move on, yeah? Yeah. Then let's uh, go. Then let's uh, go. Black Clover. Black Clover. This is Black Clover, chapter 342. Watch the night. Oh, by the way, uh, Brian's been absent for a couple weeks, and uh, the day, the week he came back, Black Clover was absent. So uh, we've had Brian uh, go back and uh, kind of retake the journey of Black Clover for us and uh, let us know his thoughts so he can cover the series along with us. Um, so I'm going to throw it over to him. And uh, Brian, why don't you tell me what you think about Black Clover as a whole? What is your impression of the series? I like Black Clover. Okay. I said it. I said it. And I liked it a lot faster than I thought I would. Um, Black Clover was very interesting because it was so shonen that it didn't give a fuck. It was just, <laughs> it was as shown as a, as it fucking got. Um, it had all the stereotypes. It had all of the fucking, um, you know, stereotypical shonen shit. But it just did it and it didn't give a fuck. And honestly, I was a little surprised at how much I enjoyed the comedy of Black Clover as well. Because um, part of the reason why I never got into Black Clover was because... Uh, I watched a lot of content of people saying, oh, fucking Asta just screams all the fucking time. It's so fucking annoying. So boring. So lame. <laughs> Were I was you like, listening oh, to well, early I mean, New Jump City? <laughs> <laughs> I guess, I guess, no, I guess it's bit. not really that great. I shouldn't get into it. Um, <laughs> but the more I started reading, um, I started to realize, oh, shit. Well, this series is actually a little more interesting than I thought. Um, th of course... Uh, there were at the beginning, it was like a lot of fucking fodder villains who talked like the the most crazy shit, like for no reason. They talked the most shit. But um, I feel like the people who talked the most shit were the royals. And even then, I feel like the royals weren't really. All right. I the more I, I was thinking about it, right? And it was like the royals were always constantly shitting on like Asta and you know and Noel and and um um and I'm like okay so they're shitting on them they're assholes right and as the series goes on and on it's not like they stop shitting on them once they prove themselves right and I'm like yeah but that doesn't mean that they change as characters right like if you really think about it some well except for maybe Nozel. Nozell, I'd say, is like the exception to this rule, but you wouldn't see these dudes like sh like I can't picture these guys not shitting on another random peasant, you know. Um, the thing about the royals and it's that they have an extremely high standard for things, and you kind of have to prove your your worth to them instead of it being like like uh oh they're just pieces of shit being pieces of shit. No, they genuinely believe like like they believe that you have to earn your keep 
if you're going to be like a, a magic knight of, of or or um somebody of value you know and if you don't prove that then you're literally just a peasant um to them at least because they're so powerful and they were granted those powers like at a very young age but mm. i think it was really impressive to see that like even though these guys still remain assholes they managed to make them likable or have managed to have them have these amazing moments like nozelle i thought i would never like nozelle I'm gonna be honest. I thought I would never like Nozelle, but then as the series went on, I'm like, damn, this guy's kind of fucking cool. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's kind of fucking cool. Um, and there were a bunch of characters that I didn't expect that I think would be cool, like fucking uh, Fuego Leon. That's literally one of my favorite characters, all because they had him show up and be this fucking pillar of fucking uh, passion and, and strength for his allies around him. Like when the series lost him, I was like, damn, bro. Like I just started to like you. Why are you gone? <laughs> um, but the series never forgets about its characters. Like it, it always reel them back in when you need them. Um, and there were a lot of moments where, oh shit, that paid off perfectly. And then these characters come back and they do these amazing like big fucking crazy shit um and i think one thing that black clover does extremely well is that it knows what characters belong to what moments um it knows how to use their characters like for for moments it knows when they're overstaying their welcome or he, it's like a balance he knows when to use them like uh Finneral, for example he Finneral is not going to be the fucking frontline fucking badass that comes in and like takes down a big bad Finneral, his biggest strength is like is how he uses it's like how he uses his uh, abilities his magic um given his restrictions like he's not the strongest person around but he can support people in and be there at the right place at the right time. His whole thing is about timing. And um, there were so many moments with Finneral that made me like, oh, that's such a cool way to use his character. Um, for example, like when uh, they were fighting the fucking demon dude, uh, his brother was fighting and he came in and fucking saved his brother at the last second. That was fucking sick. I yeah. was like, oh, fuck. <laughs> Oh shit! Yeah, I remember all. It just they there's so much. So Black Clover has a lot of oh shit that was pretty cool moments, mm -hmm. um, and that's not something that a lot of manga do. Like when I'm, I've had like reading Black Clover, I heard, I felt that feeling so many fucking times. Um, it was it was actually like really impressive. Mm -hmm. So. Um, now I'm all caught up and I'm excited to see what more, uh, he could bring to the table. Cause, uh, and I'm not really going into it expecting like extremely complicated fucking story beats and stuff like that. Cause sometimes, you know, it's nice to enjoy just a little simplicity and black clover is like the king of simplicity right now, in my opinion. Oh yeah. Um, nice. Well, I'm glad. Welcome on board. Uh, and without further ado, let's get into the new chapter. This is Black Clover, chapter 342, Watch the Night. Uh, last we left off, uh, Asta was uh, in his training uh, to Master Zetan, and uh, we learn that through his conversation with Ichika, uh, Yami's sister, that it turns out Yami has slaughtered uh, hers and his respective, you know, their the same family he, he slaughtered their clan before he ended up in the clover kingdom yes in order to obtain the mangakyo shamaragan yeah um yeah there's a lot of there's been a lot of jokes that yami is basically itachi and hey this chapter doesn't really shy away that that might be the case uh yami Tsukahelo. yeah yami uchiha <laughs> yami uchiha uh Last we left, okay, so now we're getting into the details of, uh, of the backstory of Yami. 
Um, basically, he comes from a clan of uh, warriors known as the Kijin. Kijin. Uh, they're basically uh, assassins that you know they would uh, they were very distinguished on the battlefield. Uh, then, as warriors, they were uh, placed in charge of the security of Goshu, a territory at the far edge of the land. Uh, and according to a lesson, legend of the distant past, a five-headed dragon that rampaged through the land of the sun was quelled uh, there by a heavenly maiden. It was said that the Yoryoku of that dragon uh, turned the ocean black and stagnant, twisting space and time and connecting it to hell. Pretty intense. <laughs> Literally turned the ocean in, around the island black. Yeah. Um, and With the tar. We cut over to Yami as a young man getting trained by his dad, uh, who, uh, you know, Yami's getting his ass, <laughs> his ass beat. He's like, now we're stuck out here guarding the boonies just for this is a job for dogs. You know, um, he's just upset that his uh, his like family has been reduced to this. They used to be warriors on a battlefield, but now they're like guarding this useless man uh land uh ichika as a young girl runs over to yami uh to kind of like you know in, in concern and uh she looks over at her dad and his and her dad's like you look like her giving birth to a lousy girl then dying on me uh oh, lousy girl damn sheesh and uh, he's like, yeah, the Yami clan don't need a dead weight who can't fight. And he goes down to strike uh, Ichika. But Yami, a super ripped 14 year old, just guards his sister, uh, veins popping out of his arms. Um, and uh, he's, uh, and uh, the dad is pretty stoked because, like, right now, Yami is showing more Yoryoku your than uh, the, the Lord's son, which is. You know, I guess we'll find out is Ryuya. Um, He's like, sick! <laughs> nice! <laughs> yes, my son is strong. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he's like, my, the title of demon god of our clan's strongest fighter is going to be yours, Sukihiro. And Yami's For like... For sure. Yami's like, I don't give a fuck. I'm going fishing. And he brings uh, Ichika... Uh, he brings Ichika along with him. Uh, they're fishing, and you know, they're everybody's like, whoa... Yami, you're really good at fishing. Uh, and that's when Ryuya shows up, I believe. He's just like, hey, man, I like fishing too, you know? Um, and uh, they're talking, you know, they just like talk amongst each other. Um, and uh, Ryuya s states that he wants this country to be a place where they can all laugh and laugh together no matter what their rank is and what no matter what their Yoyoku looks like. Um and Yami shows him some respect. He's like, that uh, That dream of yours is pretty nice, though. And um, Ichiga, we cut over to the president, and he's like, I thought I thought it was, too, but he was lying. It was just like our dad said. He was, he was a demon god, just like, no, even worse than our father. And uh, it turns out by the at the age of 13, Yami managed to kill his entire family um, for reasons unknown. So uh, after he killed his family, he fled the land and he's been living, uh, according to Ichika, an, over, uh, an easy life overseas. And uh, he's like, why would I trust a man like him? And, you know, and Asta, of course, is just like, man, don't be talking shit about my captain. <laughs> he's like, I believe in the Captain Yami I've seen, you know. Uh, and um, Ichika's like, you know nothing. I saw it with my own fucking eyes. He killed my whole family. Um, and Asta just keeps, uh, arguing in Yami's defense. It is like, even if you are the captain's sister, I can't back down on this. Um, and I uh, won't believe you. I can't believe you. I can't, believe I need you. to not believe you. Yeah, basically. And each guy's like, bet, prove it. Use the strength you've, you're, you acquired while you were with him. I'll train you right now and I'll get serious. And uh, she uses uh, her ability to, like, create this Dark Yorjutsu uh, armor uh, and activates her ability. Dark Yorjutsu, dark clad, dark clothes, black armor. Jutsu. And she creates this cool, dope uh, shadow samurai uh, super duper edge uh, <laughs> uh, 
character design and he's like don't blame me if you die and that's where the chapter she's is. no longer holding back no she's very serious no more. she's gonna she's gonna get sorry uh, you asked for it this is such a bother baka <laughs> Uh, Josh, what did you think about Black Clover chapter 342? I really enjoyed this chapter because I didn't know Yami was so sleaze. He was so what? He's very sleaze. I didn't know how sleaze he was. I wonder if like he he found out that the members of his clan was attempting a coup uh, on the village, on the uh, land of the sun. That's my bet. Probably. Yeah. And uh, maybe Yami was a part of like this special military group who got ordered to kill his family. Yeah. Sounds familiar. Yeah. What's not familiar is a female in that series standing up for herself. That's not true. I'm being mean. <laughs> but... Uh, no, um, I I didn't know that uh, she could take it up a notch to this level. That being Yami's sister, her, th- their backstory is interesting. I really want to know why, like what the motivation was behind killing all of them. Hopefully, he re- he really isn't sleazy and evil. Um, I still better better put in work. If he loses, to her, I'm gonna. Mm, he's not gonna be my favorite character anymore. <laughs> That's quite the consequence, to be honest. It is. Come on, Tabata. Make a choice. Make a choice. Um, Were those all your thoughts? Yes. All right. Brian, what did you think about this chapter? Um, I'm just curious where they're going to go with this whole, like, because we know that Yami probably didn't do this. Or if he did, they probably deserved it. Because, like, knowing Black Clover, Yami is fucking king, okay? Like, <laughs> dude, we, we, all go, man. we all go to the church of fucking Yami, all right? Like, this dude can do no wrong. Yeah. <laughs> so, the odds that he did something wrong here is very low, and Asta is probably going to punch fight this girl into loving her brother <laughs> that's just what's gonna happen punch fight you without a doubt he's gonna smack some sense into her he, like he's gonna smack her with his sword so hard that she's gonna be like oh shit wait i forgot about the fact that my dad was like an evil demon king <laughs> fuck okay well <laughs> i guess my brother was right to kill him yeah <laughs> um I, I agree with you guys. You know what's funny? Um, I feel like, you know, this this stuff with Ichika, this conflict that, that's being drummed up with Ichika and Asta, it feels a little artificial to me. I feel like uh, there's, like, this misunderstanding, not, not for uh, any good reason, really. It's just, like, kind of they're playing these, like, kind of semantics with each other. We don't. As an audience, we don't have a reason to suspect that Yami's actually done something wrong. Uh, it's like Brian said, it, like his dad was revealed to be a fucking dickhead. So there's no way that these guys are not dickheads that didn't deserve to be slaughtered, I guess. Um, I, Yeah, you know, it, it'd be one thing if, you know, they try, they like kind of at least gave an air that like his clan were good people and, you know, he, he killed them for no reason. But you know, it's pretty heavily implied that they're power hungry people that are not happy with the royal family. So they probably did something that caused Yami uh, to try and protect the Shogun in self defense. So, yeah, I, I wish uh, I wish there was like a little bit. I mean, maybe it still has yet to be established, but I, I wish there was a little bit more of um you know, just a little cloaking of the fact that, you know, Yami is like obvious, so obviously not a bad guy. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, there's no shadow, there's no doubt at all that, like, not even a little bit, not even, you know, I can't even give it on a generous note. You know, Tabata, you're not tricking anybody. Yeah, right? Here. Like, that's what I'm, <laughs> that's what I mean. It's like, what? What, what you know, are what? you thinking? You think we're going to fall for this? <laughs> yeah, you think we're going to be like, 
Yami was the bad guy here. No. <laughs> no way. Not a single person is going to say that. <laughs> Not a single person. Yeah. Come on, man. <laughs> like, you know, if he made his dad not a piece of shit you know if he made his dad be like we're, we're gathering this power to protect you know the royal family and you know it turns out he was lying you know that's the twist here uh that's one thing but you know he makes no fucking effort to disguise the fact that you know yami within the context of the story will be justified in doing what he did uh so yeah i don't know i wish that was a little better executed uh listen if 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 tabata is gonna try to trick us like this he's gonna have to surpass his limits right here right <laughs> now right now right now next chapter's gotta be like <laughs> he's gotta do double time bro he's gotta summon a whole new thing out of his book you must know why yami did it <laughs> i must find also, the motivation can... Can you uh can you explain your Yuku a little bit more for me? Actually, I it's, it's no something your that I still Yuku. don't really get it. Your, your Yuku. Your Yuku. Your Yuku. Your Yoku. Your Yoku. I Yoku. You do. Yo- we Yoku. We Yoku. <laughs> no, but it's like chi, right? Like that's basically what it is. Yeah. It's like chi. I mean, look, it's it's basically there's magic tied together with this inner chi thing that um that Yami wields. So I think it's like a combination of both. Where So Yami's been using Yoriyoku this whole time? I think so. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So dark Yoriyoku. Yes. There's like So that's Yojitsu. why he has his <clears throat> So how does he have his a grim not a grim. He does have a grimoire. How does he So the grimoire I think you can infuse it. You know, I think that's like what he did is that he's using there's like as because it's not all like magic, you know. Because there's, um, I think Zetan is that chi energy type thing, that's mixed with your Yoku because the Shogun doesn't have your Yoku, or uh, at the very least has like very low your Yoku. Um, that is different from Zetan, which is what Asta is currently learning. It's this like the inner chi thing, and I think um, you meld that with your magical ability, which is the your Yoku. Um, but I know we got a guy who watches this show and, um, I don't know if I'm wrong or like if I'm misreading thing, but I think that's how I'm interpreting it. I know there's a guy who comments, uh, on our, on our, uh, Black Clover content regularly. Shouts out to you because you've been very helpful, uh, in giving like Mm. stuff that we missed because, uh, our memory, uh, is not as good on Black Clover, uh, or, you know, little details and chapters that we've missed, but, um, yeah, I, I think that's what, like, the difference is, is that there's Zetin, which is the key and, you know, the the life force energy that Asta is currently learning. And there's Yoriyoku, which is the Land of Suns version of magic. Um, oh, okay. So that's how I think is right. But uh, please confirm <laughs> if I'm correct or not. I think that's how I understand <laughs> it. Um, but, yeah, do you have a – does anybody have any rebuttals, any more thoughts then? Um, uh, I'm here's how the next chapter is gonna go. Asta is gonna like get his butt beat a little bit, he's gonna be like, then Yami's sister's gonna be like, You're so fucking weak, you stupid little bitch. This is what learning from Yami does to you. And then Asta's gonna get up, he's gonna be like, Asta, Yami taught me how to protect people, protect my (laughs) friends. What good is it might be? What's the point of me getting stronger if I can't protect them? Ah. And then she's and then she's gonna be like oh, but Yami didn't protect my family. <laughs> and then and then he also is gonna be like, but but he protected you. And then she's he gonna did. be like oh, 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 oh. <laughs> And then it is as she gets slashed <laughs> metaphorically. Yeah. yeah. It's not going to be a real slash. He's going to like slash her powers or something. But it's, yeah, it's going to make the powers disappear, but also in her brain, the stigma is going to disappear. Yeah, her trauma. She's going to accept Yami as she accepts defeat. 
Yeah, but she's still going to be a sundere about it. When she sees him, she's going to be like, oh, Baka, yeah. why'd you come back yeah, she's home? She's going to be blushing hard because she made him realize. So she made He oh, made yeah. her realize. Oh, yeah. She's joining Asta's harem for sure. Oh, yeah. She for can't sure. wait to his babies. <laughs> Asta got a whole ass roster. <laughs> yeah. It's got a fucking body count. <laughs> yeah. Well, all right. Well, that was Black Clover. A lot of fun. Um, I guess we can move on now, yeah? Yeah. No. <laughs> undead Unluck. This is Undead Unluck chapter 133 roadmap. Uh, last we left off with Undead Unluck, uh, the time loop has been initiated, uh, and uh, Yo, um, damn, Fuko has been uh, traveled back over to the 1970s. Uh, where she meets up with a no, who is the unknown negator. And Josh, you were actually right about this. Uh, I think I misinterpreted this last week with uh, the significance of the G pen artifact. And uh, Mm -hmm. we, (laughs) we see that, um, you know, it is confirmed that like in the previous loop, uh, a no touched the pen and that's how he became a negator. Uh, I I wasn't sure about that last time. So good on you for catching that. I laugh because I know it's called the G pen for real, for real, but there's also a G pen from Snoop Dogg for weed, <laughs> and it's just like hilarious how he's any, you know, the G yeah, pen. Yeah, pen. Um, Fuko so, was like, "No, say no to drugs." Say no to drugs, kids. I think she would say that though. <laughs> anyway, so basically, she explains that in a previous loop, he touched the pen and became a negator, and uh, that. It became a negator that nobody would ever notice called unknown. So I'm here. She says, I'm here to stop that future from happening and takes the pen away. Um, so uh, this guy's like, hmm, I, I, I know it's like, you're lying. You just want to keep the pen for yourself. And uh, she's like, OK, then I guess I'll have to convince you. And then she uses the rule, the uh, UMA known as move uh, to just teleport uh, herself and unknown around. Um, and she's, she takes him to the place where that she meant, met him the first time way back in the day, uh, when I know first appeared in the series and she explained basically what happened. And the way that she found him is, uh, by thinking of this like first, uh, s- like panel of the series that I know would end up drawing that she becomes a fan of. And uh, it is very similar to the scene that she just stopped where uh, Ano finds the G-Pen and it changes his life basically forever. Um, So, yeah, basically she explains that and he's like, I'm going to be a manga artist. And she's like, yep, you'll make shoujo. And he's like, "Uh, even though I'm a jump reader right now. Oh, that's that's cool. Um, It's very nice. So, you know, it it turns out that um, she's like. Uh, I know. I was like, wait, it's September now, not April. The date's all wrong. Um, and she's like, yep. But, you know, I waited every day at that spot for at 5 p.m. to prevent this unlucky incident from happening. Um, so, you know, um, and she's like, you did that by yourself? That sounds terrible. And she's like, well, at, compared to what you've done for me, uh, it's not that bad. And she's like, what did I do for you? He's like, what I've done for you? And he's like, yeah, besides, my partner is fighting even harder. And uh, we get a flashback to uh, when Fuko actually just got through the loop. And we notice that, like, she notices that there's, like, a message left for her uh, on uh, the headquarters uh, like that's been etched in stone, which is basically uh, kind of like a nice thing. It's like, it says, I do for you, you do for me we do for the union. Can you do it partner? And she says, Roger, you know? Um, and her plan is to prevent everyone's unluck, uh, until the day that she finds Andy, who's been, uh, going around and gathering artifacts for the battle. Um, so, you know, uh, this, uh, I know thanks her. And, um, she, uh, she, uh, he, sorry, I keep mixing up. Uh, he was like, I'll cheer everyone on with my manga. And once the series comes out, be sure to read it. The title will be. And then at that moment, hey, don't pirate it. Yeah. At that moment, 
<laughs> yeah, don't pirate it. Read it legally <laughs> on viz.com slash shonen jump. Uh, Free. And uh, she uses move to just teleport uh, a no away at, back home, actually, uh, to the point where his mother was looking for him. Because if you don't know a no's backstory, uh, after touching the G pen, he disappears forever and his mom, like, never finds him. So that's nice. Yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, the move uh, UMA is like, <laughs> no hope, no help from a known this time around. And he's like, he's helped enough. Um, and she looks at it. He's like, now that I'm looking at the G liners memories this time around, my hypothesis seems correct of the three uh, sacred spirit treasures. Only the heart's information is missing. So and at this point, um, they've never found the third sacred uh, weapon uh, sp- sacred spirit treasure and it turns out that uh she's uh she's basically thought that uh the heart that the heart artifact the only one that hasn't shown up uh, only drops in the 101st loop which is where they are right now this is the 101st time that they've reset time uh, in their war against god um so she's like this is going to be the most difficult quest ever and we'll need stronger allies than ever before um, so it, she sprays out this map and it turns out it's a roadmap of all the information that they've uh, acquired in the previous loop. And, uh, she mentions that the key to defeating God will likely be the last of the three spirit treasures, the heart. So we'll need to assemble negators. And this is a, a strategy guide, the roadmap for creating the ultimate union. And we see all of the negators sprawled out across the map and, um, her thing uh her ultimate plan is to uh is to basically stop the tragedies that become that turn them into negators in the first place yes and the first thing that she's going to start with is uh mr nico and miss gina and that's where the chapter ends nico robin yes (laughs) josh what did you think about uh undead unluck chapter 133 RGC motherfucker. Oh, How about yeah. that? Same. Yeah, not to, to be you, honest. But in general, RGC, man, I can't believe they did it. Yeah. I can't believe it. Certified this series was supposed RGC to be over months ago. I wrote it off. I'm an asshole. To all the Undead Unluck fans, I was holding it down saying that half faith. You were right. You were right. I'll say it too. You guys Look right. at Fuko. She's tall now. And she's got that fucking life. And she's going to save everyone, y'all. I, I was like, y'all, I th- I, wouldn't that be cool? If she went back to go save everybody, and that's exactly what happened. She's going to get their strengths without them being negators. Wholesome. Wholesome? Wholesome. Wholesome. Yeah. Um, I think Andy's kind of mean for never seeing her. But whatever. <laughs> hey, you know, he's working. He's working on stuff. Probably some plot reason for it. Yeah, definitely. He's. She said that they were like he was like getting artifacts. Yeah, but she's been on the planet for a thousand years, so True. it's like a hundred years. So. True. Was that it? I don't know about that. Yeah, that's about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess I don't disagree with Josh. I thought this was a great chapter. Um, I I'll keep it short as well. I'm really excited for this um i i always figured that it it was going to be like a get the band back together type of thing but i'm excited to see how it pulls off i can't imagine that she'll spend that much time with everyone i mean that's that will make this a very long series so um i'm um i'm very excited to see how this goes this is gonna tug at my heartstrings a little especially since we just got nico's backstory and considering yeah how, how fucking sad that story is um fresh i'm actually kind of excited to see um what this brings gina is from way back she yeah, they actually murdered yeah. her <laughs> to to get into the union in the first place so mm-hmm. you know uh i'm excited to see how they change that up a little bit um, but yeah, I'm glad that there's like kind of a clear direction for the series post, uh, the time loop. I'm very excited to, to see, I love the premise overall. Uh, and 
Yeah, I, I don't have much to say. Just a simple, short, and sweet. I know we've been going on for a long uh, on this episode, so uh, great chapter uh, for a great series. Uh, I'm I can't wait for next week. Um, so I guess with that being said, we can uh, close this out. Yeah, Josh. Yes, sir. All right, guys, that was Undead Unlock, and that has been our show. Thank you guys so much for listening. As per usual, you can find me at the Chris Espinal on Twitter and Instagram. Josh at JD Cole underscore 37 on Instagram at New Jump City Josh on Twitter. Uh, Brian at B.ESP on Twitter and Instagram. Follow him on twitch.tv slash it's punchline to watch him play video games. Uh, you can uh, follow the show itself at New Jump City on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, follow the show itself on Twitter, especially because we do a really good chapter of the week poll that I forgot to mention. Uh, Black Clover won this week, the audience poll by the way. Certified RGC. Certified RGC. Certified RGC. Sorry, it's a little late, but we do reveal it. You just got to listen to the whole show to find out where it is sometimes. Um, but yeah, you can vote uh, for your favorite series on uh, the poll that goes up every Sunday, uh, a couple hours after the chapters jump, uh, drop on uh, Viz's Show and Jump website. Uh, you can uh, uh, email us at newjumpcitypod at gmail.com with any questions, suggestions, anything you guys want us to talk about. Uh, please comment under the videos what you guys thought about the chapters that we read about the show itself uh we love feedback comment subscribe hit that notification bell so you never miss an upload uh like share the podcast that would be very nice if you prefer audio podcasts the audio version of the podcast usually comes out first uh so check us out on itunes spotify wherever you listen to podcasts and uh we're on there but yeah that's it for this week next week will be a little simpler i hope uh we have less series to explain fully (laughs) all the way through so pretty excited to to get to it um we are inching closer to 200 episodes very excited about that uh so you know stay tuned um maybe we'll do a little something special for it but without further ado thank you guys so much for listening as always and stay safe new jump citizen